Hey guys, it's Chris. From bodily functions that don't work in space to the very experience itself, here are nine strange things astronauts have to deal with in space. Number 9. Burping in Space There are many major differences between Earth and outer space, but one of the biggest ones is gravity. Gravity holds us to the ground on Earth, but there is no gravity in space. Thus, your body reacts differently to the non-gravity setting that you find yourself in. And as astronauts learned rather accidentally, that means that things you can do easily on Earth in regards to your bodies, you can't do in space technically. This may seem like an odd concept, why can't you burp in space, but it actually has to do with gravity. A former International Space Station commander Chris Hatfield was actually asked this on Twitter one time. And he replied, You can't burp in space because the air, food, and liquids in your stomach are all floating together like chunky bubbles, Hatfield said. So guess where the trapped air goes? If you burp, you throw up in your mouth. It makes sense when you think about it. That's why astronauts can only eat certain types of things in space and why liquids act differently in space than they do on Earth. So by this token, don't expect astronauts to burp in space to try to impress or gross one another out. Because they won't like what comes next. Number 8. Medical Support in Space Imagine this. You're in space on a mission and something goes wrong with one of the astronauts. They get wounded or they suddenly get sick with something. What is there to do? The truth is, depending on the situation, there's actually very little that can be done. It honestly depends on where the incident took place, what's available to use, and who is available to treat them. Medical emergencies in an astronaut during a long-term space mission represent a potential life-threatening situation for both the victim as well as the complete crew and endanger the complete mission. Dr. Johan Hinkelbein said in a conference in Geneva, There's absolutely no help from outside possible. The most life-threatening problem is cardiac arrest, needing for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Performing CPR techniques properly may save the life of the astronaut in space as well as the whole mission. But even doing that can be risky as the zero-gravity element of space makes it hard to perform such procedures. And given the long-term mission nature, medical supplies can run out. And you can't just turn around to go home. Space doesn't work that way. That's why training and examining the astronauts before launching them into space is crucial. And even then, they can't account for everything. For example, the loss of blood in an astronaut during a mission could be catastrophic. Traumatic conditions with blood loss are a big concern. But if someone needs a transfusion, there won't be any blood bank on Mars, said Dr. Matthew Komorowski. The expected lack of blood products could be mitigated using whole fresh blood transfusion, which is commonly used in military operations. In this case, blood compatibility would become a selection criteria for a mission to Mars. These are things that are going to need to be accounted for as we venture further into space travel. Number 7. Space Surgery Just as humanity is trying to push what we can do in the stars, we're also trying to push what we can do with medicine in the confines of space. At present, what astronauts can do is limited based on supplies, what's happening, and other things. And one of the biggest things being considered is that of doing actual surgery in space. This notion is fraught with problems, including having a sterile area to perform in, having all the tools necessary in whatever confines the surgeon would find themselves in, and of course dealing with zero gravity conditions, as artificial gravity has not been invented yet. Gravity has a lot of effects on the body, especially during a surgery on Earth, and in space a lot of things you wouldn't expect would be coming to light. Surgery in space would be very difficult, Dr. Perezniski said, who is a trained astronaut of multiple missions. Blood wouldn't pool in the surgical wound, and you would have to manage blood loss and contamination of the wound. The air in a spacecraft is full of hair follicles and dead skin floating around. Keeping a wound clean is a real challenge up there. If it could work, it would change many medical procedures in the space program. But for right now, it is but a pipe dream. And now for number 6, but if you're new here, be sure to subscribe to World List and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. Number 6. Don't throw up. One of the most important things about training to be an astronaut is going through stress training. 
but not stress in terms of mental stress, though that is an important aspect of training, but rather the stress of going into space and having to deal with all the forces at work. Like, for instance, the G-forces of exiting Earth's gravity. This is mainly to train your body and brain to not throw up constantly. But as anyone who's gone into space will tell you, training can only take you so far. Once you're in the disorienting atmosphere literally of space, your body tends to react how it wants to react. And yeah, you can get sick in space via a variety of ways. So what do the astronauts do? They do their best not to throw up in compromising positions like when they're at the controls or inside their suits, and they have machines that they use on things like the International Space Station that help them through their sickness and can even help them train their mind to not throw up. Number 5. Hard Time Sleeping I want you to think about what it's like to sleep here on Earth. Depending on your job and what times you go to bed, it can be different than someone else. But typically, you work during the day and go to bed at night when it's nice and dark. Usually, you'd sleep in your nice comfy bed and all that. But in space, whether it be in a shuttle or the International Space Station, that's not really an option. First off, astronauts sleep in pods, which function also as their own personal rooms. If you're curious as to why, it's because of gravity. Gravity won't let you stay in one spot unless you're strapped in, so these pods often have that ability. Or you can choose to just rest and sleep in an open area of the shuttle or station and just float in space. You'll actually be able to move very little depending on the momentum you put yourself in when you try to get into a sleeping position. But this is not recommended given the sensitive nature of such crafts. The other problem, though, is light. On Earth, your body can adjust to day based on what it's like outside. But in space, it's dark all the time. And your body sometimes wouldn't react like it should because it's used to working in the daytime and sleeping at night. Then there's this stimulation from space, such as random flashes of light waking you via cosmic rays. Either way you look at it, sleeping is something that must be trained to do in space, especially during long-term missions. And astronauts go through mental and physical training to prepare them for that, and only rarely use pharmaceutical methods to get their sleep. Number 4. Weird Body Changes Whether you realize it or not, gravity has a large effect on your body, from the way you move to how your body grows. In space, with no gravity, your body doesn't experience these limitations. And thus, certain things happen to you. One of the most known examples is that during your first few months in space, you'll actually grow taller. And why is that? Well, it's because your spine is compressed when you're on Earth due to gravity. It doesn't harm you, it just keeps you in check in regards to growth. But in space, your spine is free to expand. And by that token, you'll actually get 3% taller. But the lack of gravity on your body can also cause your body to go through some weird changes such as the fluids in your body learning to be distributed without gravity. On Earth, the fluids are channeled in the lower parts of your body, but in space, not so much. In the first few months, the fluids will actually leave the legs and reside in your head and upper body, which has given the appearance that an astronaut has a puffy face and skinny legs. Eventually, though, the body works itself out and you'll look like your regular self. Number 3. You get weaker in space. You might think that in space, the experiences would be empowering because of what you're doing. But the truth is that once you're in space, you actually have to deal with getting weaker. It's not hard to see once you think about it. Gravity keeps you bound on Earth, and thus you need your muscles in order to get around. And the stronger the muscles are, the more you can do. But in space, everything is easier because of the lack of gravity, which means that your muscles aren't getting the workout they need to stay strong. To that end, if astronauts don't work out on the shuttle or space station during long missions, they can be very weak and frail when they return home. This is why a two-hour daily workout regime is required of astronauts so that when they return to Earth, they'll be in relatively good shape. Number 2. Your bones will suffer if you don't exercise Exercise in space is vital to those astronauts who have long-term missions. Because the lack of muscle use doesn't just affect the muscles, it affects the very bones in your body. Without constant use and strain on the human bones, they can start to actually lose density, which makes them easier to break. Per month, an astronaut can lose up to 1% of their bone density if they're not careful and don't exercise enough. And even if they're lucky enough to not hurt anything in space, once they re-enter Earth and get pulled down by its gravity, they could seriously hurt themselves. So when in space, astronauts have to take care of themselves, else they suffer the consequences. Number 1. 
going to space is a transcendent experience. Well over 500 people have gone into outer space since the time of the space race during the Cold War. Since then, we've learned more about our world, the moon, and the universe at large. But if you talk to any astronaut that's been to space, regardless of their mission, you'll hear them talk about it with an air of reverence. This is because when you reach space, you realize that you're beyond everything that you've ever known and felt before. Not just the lack of gravity, but also the familiarity of the planet you were born and raised on. It's all gone. And you have to relearn everything that you've ever known. From eating, to going to the bathroom, to just moving around. Even just viewing the Earth in its clearly round form is something special. You're not looking at a picture of it. You're actually looking at it in all its beauty and shape. To that end, when the astronauts return to Earth, there's often an adjustment period where they have to get used to not just gravity, but how their own body works and how items work once more. Space is not for everyone. NASA has proven that time and time again. But to those who are able to go into space, you'll find yourself living a whole other life. Thanks for watching. Did you learn more about space through the eyes of astronauts? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.